Coke versus cock. Are you asking for sex every time you want to drink in English? Because these two sounds are so similar that if you don't know the three subtle differences between them, then it's highly likely that you could be asking for sex every time you want to drink a can of Coke in English. So in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you the subtle differences that you need to know to tell the difference between these two sounds so that you can feel confident when you're using both of these words and both of these sounds in English. Welcome back to English School Online. It's great to see you again. And if you're new here, then this English pronunciation channel helps non-native English speakers to speak English clearly, confidently and effectively so that you can perform better in meetings, presentations and job interviews. I'm on a mission fighting for your confidence in English and if this sounds like the kind of help that you're looking for then join our pronunciation army by smashing that subscribe button and turning notifications on so that you get notified when I release more English pronunciation tutorials for you in English. Let's dive in with the video. A few years ago I was working for a drinks company where I was giving out cans of a fizzy drink on the street for people in England. Charlie today? today? Yes, Energy meets everything. Charlie today? today? And a non-native English speaker came up to me and she said to me, I want cock. Cock is a very rude word for a man's penis. And I said to her, excuse me? And then she said, I want cock again. And then she said it again when I said, I'm sorry that I don't understand what you mean. Then I realised what she was asking for. Coke. Now, this might seem like a very obvious thing for me to understand. But the problem was, I wasn't giving out cans of Coke. So when she said that she wanted what she was trying to say was Coke, it was completely out of context. And unfortunately for her, she asked me for sex. And if she'd known what she'd asked for, I'm sure she would have been very, very embarrassed. So that is why it's so important to know the differences between these two sounds here. So let's dive in. I'm gonna get started by explaining to you the important differences between these sounds. And then I'm gonna give you my number one tip and this tip alone is the most important thing you can use for clearly pronouncing both of these sounds. Let's dive in. First of all, let's look at the length. O is a diphthong and O is a short English vowel sound. That means that O should last the length of clicking your fingers. O, O, O. It's very, very short. O is a diphthong. It's made up of two vowel sounds in English and the length of it should be the same length as a long vowel sound in English. If your language doesn't have long vowel sounds, then it's highly likely that when you're saying long vowel sounds in English and diphthongs, that you're making them too short. And that's why your diphthongs and long vowel sounds might sound like short vowel sounds in English. So the real key for success here with the length of the diphthong O is for it to last. O, O, O. Okay, it lasts. So that's the first difference that you need to be aware of. O is short, O. O is long, O. And when you're pronouncing O in training mode, like you are here, I recommend that you practice pronouncing it for two seconds at a time. O, O, to help you feel the important length of this diphthong. The second difference is the sounds themselves. O is a rounded vowel sound. My lips, O, 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 are in a circle. O, O, O. In terms of spacing in between my teeth, you can think of it that there should be almost enough space for two fingers to go between your teeth. O, 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 O. If you're saying the vowel sound quickly, it might be just enough space for one and a half. O, 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 O. 
but it's very important that your mouth is wide enough open. For O, we make the schwa sound to begin with, and then we move up to the U sound. Here's the important thing with the schwa sound at the beginning. The first sound in any diphthong takes up about three quarters of the length of the diphthong. So we make the schwa louder and longer than we do the U. Uh. When we make the schwa, our lips are in a neutral position. Uh, uh, uh. They're not rounded, oh, 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 and they're not stretched wide apart, e, 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 no. They're neutral, uh, uh, uh. They should be relaxed and you should be able to pull them and play with them whilst you're making the schwa sound. Uh, 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 uh. And what we do from the schwa is we just gradually move up into the uh, uh, uh position, like this, oh. Oh, oh. Can you hear how the schwa is lasting for the majority of that sound? Oh, oh. This is the length of the schwa. Oh, oh. Okay, that's very, very important. So those are the first two things that you need to be aware of. Now, I'm about to give you my number one tip that if you're still struggling, should help you to understand the difference between these two sounds. Just before I do that, if you're finding this tutorial useful and you want to avoid making other embarrassing pronunciation mistakes in English, like confusing can't and can't, or sheet and sheet, then I highly recommend watching this playlist here where I have put together a series of tutorials that will teach you all the most offensive pronunciation mistakes that you can make in English by mixing up vowel sounds, and it will show you step by step how to avoid them. So at the end of the video, I highly recommend watching this playlist here. And if you want more pronunciation tutorials like this on YouTube to help you speak English clearly, then join our pronunciation army by smashing that subscribe button and turning notifications on. Now, the number one tip for success with these two sounds in English is to not start the schwa sound in the O diphthong with rounded lips. I have taught this sound and the differences between these two sounds to many students who have bought my pronunciation coaching program. And the number one thing that has made the vast majority of the difference for them is to not round their lips when they're starting the schwa sound. Because so often what they do when they want to make the O diphthong is they start it in an O position because the U sound that comes afterwards is also rounded. So the mistake that they make is O, O, O. They're transitioning between two sounds but they're starting in a rounded position. And if you do that, and then you don't transition enough, it can really sound just like the O, oh, okay? So once again, uh, 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 this is the schwa, this is how we're gonna start. Relaxed, uh, 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 oh, oh. If I turn sideways, oh, oh. You should be able to see my lips stick out when I round them for the uh, okay? Oh, oh. That is compared to oh, 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 when my lips are tightly rounded. So let's now put these sounds back into the words. Coke, 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 Oak, and finally, oh. Ock, ock, cock, cock, cock. Do not ask for cock when you want to be asking for a nice cold can of Coke, okay? If you now want to uncover five more of the rudest and most offensive pronunciation mistakes that you might accidentally be making in English, then watch this tutorial right now where I'm going to show you exactly what the mistakes are and also how to fix the vowel sounds that are causing these mistakes for you in English. And that's going to immediately 
boost your confidence. So watch this now and I'll see you there in just a second. <laughs> 